Happy Monday, everybody! Welcome! I'm Leah of Pygmy Tiger Knits here on YouTube and Instagram. Welcome! <laughs> it's another Monday. Have you been knitting? I've been knitting. I've been making, not just knitting. I've been making. Lots been going on over here. I hope you guys have had a great week and ready to kick off a new one. This is episode 12, and we have hit over 500 subscribers. I can't believe it. It's crazy. So if you're one of those subscribers, thank you so much. Keys, keep like, commenting, and sharing. And if you're new, welcome. If you enjoy, go ahead and hit, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner and like, comment, and share with your friends. You guys, I can't believe it. I was like shocked. My husband and I are both like, what? Oh, you know what that means? That means a giveaway. Let me grab it. I forgot to bring it over here. So the giveaway is some treats that I got when we were in Mackinac City. Well, Mac these are all from the island, actually. So this one says, you're beautiful. with all these cute little mushrooms on it. I love these blue Q bags. I use them for so many things. And a couple cute little buttons. And a cool vinyl sticker that says the Midwest, because that's where we are here in Michigan. So that is our giveaway for 500 subscribers. I'm working on a bigger giveaway for when we hit a thousand and I'll tell you how to win this at the end of the podcast tonight. So it has been a busy, busy, busy week, you know, getting ready. It feels like October has really been, it's like almost the marathon of the holidays has started already. I very much enjoy fall. As many knitters, fall and winter are my favorites. I love being able to pull out my hand knits, even though it's been an unseasonably warm fall. Today, however, was a day where I think it was like 38 degrees this morning. I was like, oh, yes, yes, so good. So I have been knitting, of course, but I've also been working on another craft, which I can't share yet because it's for my dear friends, Jessica and Mike, who are getting married this next weekend. And, um, they had poor things. They had a COVID wedding. Well, not really poor things. Their first wedding was gorgeous. It was small. It was intimate. It was beautiful. Just close family and friends. Oh, my husband thinks I'm too loud. Am I too loud? <laughs> um, so anyway, they had a gorgeous wedding last October in 2020. That was more intimate. This year is the party and the renewal of vows. First year kind of thing which is great. They wanted people to contribute to them getting a camper. And she asked me to create a camper card box, which I did. And it turned out really, really, really well. However, I have not been able to share it because it is a surprise for the bride. So she will be getting it on Wednesday. So then I can hopefully can finally share some pictures and maybe some video of her seeing it. But I'm pretty pleased with that. I hope she likes it. Jessica, my love you both. So I've been working on that. So there's been some knitting, but a lot of that as well. There's also been a little bit of Halloween crafting. The big girls are being mermaid princesses. So I have got the pattern prepped and everything's cut out. I need to sew their skirts and their tops are leotard. Let me and still do their crowns. I got a lot of Halloween making stuff to do. I'm glad Halloween is still two weeks away. This mama needs that extra time. So what else? Oh, speaking of how cold it was this morning, getting the girls ready to go to school this morning, I said, oh, we need our fleece jackets this morning. And I go in our shoe closet, which my mom helped me reorganize and got me this fabulous organizational closet system back at the beginning of the summer. And on the wall behind where their coats are hanging, I noticed this weird spot and I was like, what is that? And I moved the coats aside. And there's this huge patch of moldy paint drywall. And I'm just like, oh my God, this isn't happening. Is this real? Is this really what's happening right now? And I'm looking around and feeling it. It's damp. I can poke my finger through it. I'm like, ah! So I'm like, I don't know what's happening. This is awful. So I call Brandon and come in and he shows everything. And I'm like, oh my God, this is not what we need. Lucy had her first field trip this morning. Have to take her to school, take Edie to school. We'll race back across town to get... Lucy, um, meet her at her field trip. And then, oh man. So it was not fun. The plumber came this afternoon and it turns out when my mom and I were installing 
said system that we accidentally drilled a couple holes through a pipe. Luckily it wasn't a water line, it's the other kind of line, which is really gross, but at least it's not constant water flow. Um, so he put the plumber patched the holes. We have a remediation company coming tomorrow to hopefully tear it all out and uh, see how far the damage goes. And I'm just kicking myself. But see, our house, our house is beautiful. I do love our house. But it was made from a company that just kind of like slaps up houses really, really quickly. And I don't know if they like grease the hands of inspectors or something, but I, I grew up in construction. My dad was construction. He built houses, residential and commercial buildings and stuff. And he was a stickler for the guidelines and regulations. So, you know, studs should be every so often. In this house, like where studs should be, sometimes there's not a stud. It's so weird. So where we drilled in, there should have been a stud there based on measurement of where previous studs were, but there wasn't, it was a pipe. So I feel really, really bad. Luckily I have a very understanding husband who is being very kind about it and not trying to make me feel worse than I already do. So yeah, that's always fun. We'll see how long it takes to for demo and rebuild and stuff and just, oh my gosh. So please pray that it's not a lot more damage. Please pray that it's some drywall, some insulation, some kills paint, put a barrier between the mold and kill it, and uh, some new drywall and insulation and paint. Hopefully that'll be it. We'll see. Hopefully it didn't go into the flooring. Ugh, we'll see. So yeah. I got to teach. That was just a super crazy look. I just saw myself on the screen. It kind of looked like that guy from The Shining. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> this last Saturday, I got to teach. And yeah, I'm so excited. So I finally got to teach knitting classes again for the first time since COVID started. So, God, what? It was right at the beginning of COVID, I had a class. So, God, it's been 18 months, 19, 20 months, something like that. Crazy. So I had three lovely students at Stranded Yarn and Coffee Shop here in Midland, and it was fabulous. It made me feel so good to show somebody else the skills that I love, to see their excitement, to hear what they're excited to make so I know where to guide the class later and pick future classes for them and what they're interested in learning and just hear about them and their stories. It was really fun to see them. Also this weekend, this past weekend, was the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York. Those of you who have never heard of it, it is one of the largest fiber festivals on the Eastern Seaboard. I have gone twice. I get to go next year in 2022 woo with my mom and all my Rhinebeck crew. Most of the Rhinebeck crew went this year. I did not plan on going this year. I was a little bit worried of what it might look like the first year after COVID. And also just life is a little bit crazy at the moment. So didn't end up going. That doesn't mean that I didn't shop vicariously. Not vicariously. I really shopped through my girlfriends. Chelsea, thank you for picking up the things that I was looking at and eyeing. So I didn't miss out totally. They went to Cake Palooza and they went to Indian Tangled and then they also just went to the Rhinebeck uh, New York Sheep and Wolf Festival on Saturday and Sunday. So I miss you all. I wish I was there, but it was kind of fun teaching a class the morning of Rhinebeck opening because it, it just felt like I was receiving that positive energy and the happiness from Rhinebeck even from afar. And I was pouring it out into my class and into my students. It was really, really, really great. The class I'm teaching, some people, when I started knitting and start, starting, took my first beginner class, everyone's always like, well, what are we making? And my teacher just said, we're not making anything. I'm teaching you how to knit and how to purl and cast on and cast off. So it's four skills. We're not actually making anything. If you want to turn it into a scarf, that's fine, blah, blah, blah. So I just knit like a big, long, I don't know, probably ended up 18, 24 inches of just, I'm practicing knitting, I'm practicing purling, I'm practicing stockinette stitch where you knit down and purl back, all those things. And I ended up ripping it out and turning it into a hat later. So Mike, I understand though that it's kind of nice to be, be motivated by a project in itself. So we chose this pattern. I don't know if it's reverse or not for you guys. If it is, I'll tag it below on my Instagram is where you can. I do kind of abbreviated show notes on my Instagram. After my video uploads, I'll screenshot it 
and upload it on Instagram and I will tag and hashtag makers and patterns so you can see them later. So the Page Turner Mitts by Sarah Jo Birch and it's a free pattern on Ravelry and these are super, super simple. It's just basically a garter stitch square that we seam up the side and leave a gap for their thumb. So great thing. So we're gonna knit one because you got, hopefully most of you know, when you knit, when you're always knitting, it turns into garter stitch. But the same thing happens if you're always purling. So we're gonna knit one completely and purl the other one. So we are working on it. So they're getting going and here's my card. My card, my mom had this logo made for me as a Christmas gift a couple years ago. So I finally got to use it and make a business card. So that's what we're doing in class. So yay, I'm super excited and I even ordered more Progress Keeper River or stitch markers. These are stitch markers. You can use them as progress keepers, but stitch markers because I really like to be, when I was at TNNA, the National Needle Arts Association, their conference, I took a class, I took many classes, but one class, uh, something that kind of stuck. When you're teaching, you want to, there's different kinds of levels of experience of teaching a class and participating in a class. You can have one that's a drive-through where it's like, here's the table set up and you grab your own paperwork and go sit down or, you know, it's kind of middle of the road or it's print your own and bring it or it's everything's placed in front of you, everything that you're going to need. Very nice, like a fancy restaurant, table linen, you know, cloth, tablecloth experience. That's the kind of experience I want to provide for my students. I want to have everything nice and set up and presented and welcoming. So on there, everybody had their pattern like this provided with my card. And then I clipped the progress or the stitch markers that they need on their pattern. I thought that'd be nice. So I just wanted to get some extra. So when I do that in the future, it'll just be like a little thing. I mean, you can get these for like six bucks on Amazon. There's like 150 in here. Come on. So that's what was going on today or this week. So I can't wait to go on Saturday again. My heart was just so full and happy. I was just oh, ecstatic. Well, so there are a couple FOs. And by a couple, I mean one. I finished my second pair of Saturday morning socks by Molly from a homespun house in her yarn. I completely forget the colorways, so I'm sorry. The ball bands are inside the balls. So I have to steam black these and then ladies and gentlemen, pair number 25 of Christmas socks. These are them all done. Bam. So now it is on dun, 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 to gift knitting, which I'm really pleased with that we're there. And you guys know that I finished my Christmas in July sweater just needs to be ends woven in and blocked. And then I cast on Edie's. So I got Edie's body all the way done and I was waiting. I would have, I would have been completely done, but I decided that I wanted to order some flexi flips in the correct sizes for the sleeves instead of using double points. So I was waiting on those to arrive and those arrived today from Wool and Honey. Thank you, Liz and Melissa and Annie. Missed you and left. Thank you. So those are here. I'll probably get those on my needles. It's, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot tonight. I don't know if I'm going to work on this because this is, I have to pay attention with the decreases on the arm or keep working on the sock that I'm currently working on. So I'm really excited about this. So this took me, I, I put progress keepers on here. So it was one, two, three, four days, not necessarily a whole day, but four sessions of knitting to get this done. And my dad came up with his girlfriend, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Dad. Uh, they came up yesterday to visit and play with the girls and hang out and stuff. And my dad was like, what's the progress? Like, what are the... Blah, blah, blah. So I had to bring them out. So that is the uh, knitting questions from Dave. Progress keepers. These are my progress keepers. These are little peppermint macaroon ones. And here's a cute little stocking. Christmas knits mean Christmas theme. Little plate of cookies. So most of my progress keepers, where's the other one? Here's a little hot chocolate cookie. Most of my progress keepers come from a lady named Joanna. She's so nice, or Joanne or Joanna? I'm so sorry if I get it wrong. She's the Gnome Knitter and Gnome is spelled N-O-M-E. She's out of Gnome, Alaska. And she, I think she has four kids, which is 
incredible that she makes these little miniatures. I love her progress keepers. I've been buying them for years now. I actually just got a couple more. All of these ones on the sweater are new except for the plate of cookies. And this is another new one. That's one of the little Debbie cake sandwiches. I'm just like, oh my God. And I mean, like, I don't know if you can really tell, but she even has like the texture of cake in there. Like, oh, just, I love her stuff. I'm so glad she's back at it. She took a big break there and I think it was after she had her fourth child. So go you for taking that break, but I am glad to see her back. So check her out. She's fabulous and her shipping's great. So I love that. I love, I have different holidays and kind of everyday things. And I just love looking at that. It's like little fabric or and yarn jewelry. So I like to put it on when I start knitting for the day or whatever I'm working on, because then I can visually see the progress I've made since I started. Because sometimes, especially when you're on like a big area stuck in it, like the body, you're kind of like, I feel like I've been knitting forever and I haven't, I don't, I feel like I haven't added anything. This helps because you could actually say, oh yeah, I've knit seven inches today. So that is going. That means I started casting on gift knitting. So I owe Brenton a pair of socks for Christmas. I actually bought this yarn, this yarn right here from Oink Pigments and they're out of Indiana close to Indianapolis. I don't know if they're right in Indianapolis, but they're, they're very popular in the shops around there. And this colorway, when I picked it up at one of their trunk shows is called Die Hard. <laughs> and that is one of my husband's favorite Christmas movies. And we always tease him that it's not really a Christmas movie, but technically it is because it takes place at Christmas. So Die Hard, but Die is spelled D-Y-E instead of D-I-E. And I just loved it. Like little flecks of blood, <laughs> the gray and the white. I thought, oh, that's fun. So bought it a long time ago, intending to make him some two color toe up brioche socks because he really liked mine, but it just wasn't going. It was a fail. It was a stall really because it I got like, I don't know, three, four inches into it. And I'm like, oh my God. They also, I messaged them and told them what I was doing and they dyed a red to coordinate. And it's also the same base. So I had these two colors and the stuff, you know, that four inches of toe up brioche socks were sitting there for ages. And I just said, finally, babe, do you really care if they're brioche? Like, can I just knit you regular? And he goes, yeah, you can knit me regular. So I knit these this week. So almost micro stripes in a spiral. It's got one of my candy canes on it and contrasting heel toes cuffs. So, and I'm only just a little bit onto the cuff. So I will probably work on these tonight because we're going to be watching Only Murderers in the Building. If you guys have been watching that on Hulu, it has Martin Short and Steve Martin in it and Selena Gomez. And it's really good. So I think, I think tonight might be the last episode for this season. So that'll be fun to watch. So that's my two works in progress, the Edie sweater and this. So I will work on the first her Edie sweater and cast on Lucy's and get going on finish Brenton socks and keep going through my knit, my gift knitting list. I have several pairs of socks to knit this year. I think the total was like eight or nine pairs. Two of them though are little girl socks for Edie and Lucy, their first real pair of hand knit socks because they've been bugging and asking. So I thought that might be a nice treat. Uh, how many? Me? No mom? Three of those pairs, I have to wait for the Cozy Knitter Advent skeins to arrive. So I'm like, okay, let's get everything else done. I also need to knit um, some cowls for Edie and Lucy and two Christmas, two Christmas stockings that are gifts, one that's a commission. So I would like to get that one done before Thanksgiving. So maybe I'll be working on that this week just to get it off my table and out of my brain space. So those are all the whips at the moment. I received some happy mail this week, just a little bit, just a little bit. When we were in Seattle, there was a couple treats that we couldn't quite fit in our suitcase. <laughs> My suitcase weighed 65 pounds coming home. It was full of stuff. The girls picked, you know, a treat every, you know, at the zoo, at the aquarium. So they're stuffed, they tend to pick stuffed animals. So their stuffed animals didn't all fit. One of the treats that I picked was this vase, and there's such a bad glare from my ring light, sorry. This vase, 
so pretty. It's got like a purple to it and it's iridescent. This is from the Dale Chihuly. Um, there's a Dale Chihuly exhibit going on right at the base of the Space Needle. So this was made in America from the Dale Chihuly factory. And if you who don't know who Dale Chihuly is, he's a wonderful glass artist who's from Tacoma, Washington, which is just south of Seattle. There's lots of glass pieces all over. And he lost an eye, actually. He's only got one eye. And he sketches by painting. And so you can buy his prints and canvases and his glass works. They're just, he does all these really cool, fun installations and chandeliers. And it's very, very, very cool. There's actually one here in Michigan that is about an hour south of me in Flint, Michigan at the Flint Institute of Arts, they have a chandelier, which is really cool. And then in Grand Rapids on the west side of the state, several years ago, they had a whole exhibit where he came and installed stuff. It was really, really, really neat. So Dale Chihuly is really cool. So that came in the mail. I only have, well, no, I don't say only, Never mind. I have two smaller quantities, whoops. So this is to the max. And Max says M-A-C-K-S, short for Mackenzie. So they are a dyer in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And it is Jody and one of her offspring, Mackenzie. Mackenzie's pronouns are they, them. So Mackenzie started dyeing yarn. So Tracy designed a pattern of striping doing stripes and then doing duplicate hearts all over this. I haven't printed the pattern yet. So I will, when I start working on these, I will show you guys. I'll probably save them for February around Valentine's Day. I have a couple other Valentine's colors. I'll probably knock out in February. So I just had to, it was so much fun with these neons. And these actually are all minis. So Jody just twisted them all together. So first time trying to the max, but this color, these colors I had to, it was too much fun. Then I got another package from Lamb and Kid. And I was like, I didn't, order anything else from Lamb and Kid. And I opened it up and this is their Todd color or Todd base, which is 65 yak, 35% cashmere, 50 grams. This is Alpine flannel. It's like a deep green blue. You can kind of tell. Sorry guys, podcasting at night isn't always the jam, but it's when this mommy gets to. So anyway, um, went back through my emails. I did not order this, so I need to email them and say, hey guys, I think you made a mistake, and send that back to them. Drum roll, please. <sighs> Do you all know Nick Collage? Nick Collage, Nick Collage. That sounds like a chocolate or something. So Nick Collage is a yarn company out of North Carolina, and they're very, very, very sweet ladies. They actually work with a whole cooperative of women in India who are spinning this beautiful custom, a lot of it I would describe as art yarn because sometimes there's like little applique daisies or just texture wet, super, super cool yarn. However, it is super bulky and I don't generally use super bulky because I run extremely hot. So I don't want to spend the money and knit something that I can't actually wear because I will sweat out of it. However, they have come out with a new base. And what is the new base? It's called Serenity. And it is a worsted to Aran weight. And I was like, ooh, I might be able to do that. So every year, twice a year, Nick Collage does a knit along. And they provide, well not provide, they come up with kits for these knit alongs and so many colors and all this and people all over the world participate. And I've always wanted to do it. I've followed along. I've loved it. I love the style of the aesthetic. I love the colors. But again, it's just such a thick, heavy yarn that I wouldn't want to spend the money to not wear it. But they came out with this yarn. It's a boucle. And a boucle refers to how it's spun. And here is the pattern. I love color work. I love, love. Look at those balloon sleeves. We'll see how I do on that. I might not do whole balloon sleeves. We'll see. So I was like, ooh, that's my jam. So I went on and I did my research. Oh, here's some more pictures. And this pattern is called the Express Yourself Sweater by Laurel Gerritzer. Gerritzer? 
I'm so sorry. I probably butchered that. But I went and I looked at all of the color choices and I wrote down my three top favorites. I set an alarm on my phone for the update because generally they go really fast. Figured out my size and I ordered. Now, I don't know if all of you believe in the whole Mercury and retrograde nonsense. I kind of do this time because my children have been acting bizarrely during it and technology's been fritting our fritzing our power keeps going like blinking a couple times a week it's very very odd well something happened with their website that morning and I went and I clicked on the thumbnail of the color scheme I wanted and I saw that the drop down menu changed so I just assumed that it was the right one and I went and checked out because I was nervous of getting cart jacked. And then I was like, ooh, I scored, yay, 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 excited. And then later I was like, oh man, let's go look. I wanna go look at the colors again. So I'm looking at the colors and I clicked on the one that I thought I had bought. And again, the drop down menu changed, but it was a different name. And I thought, oh no. So I went and checked my email, checked my receipt and I ordered the wrong one. So I thought, oh, well, it's only been a couple hours. I wonder if it shipped yet. So I went to their website. Their website is extremely easy to navigate. Bravo, ladies. It is also extremely user-friendly and also customer service-friendly. There is a live chat option, which they answer within a minute or two. So I was live chatting with one of the ladies, and she goes, sadly, we work really fast, and it's already in process over at the warehouse and there's nothing I can do about it right now. And I said, okay, I was like, but the return policy, what is it? And she said, there'd be no issues. So I ordered a second kit in the color scheme that was correct that I wanted. And I will just ship back the one that I don't want. No problem. Not a problem at all. So then what, like, I don't know, 36 hours later, I received an email from Melanie and she said that they had some weird glitch in their system and they had run out of the main color, that white color, the, the inventory numbers, they ran out of it. And so they just picked another color for the body and sent it to me and they said they could do three things. I could keep the color that they chose. I could, I could choose a different color if I wanted to. Or I could wait because they were doing they were doing another big order from India, but they don't know when that will come in. And I said, okay. I was like, send it to me with the color that you picked. And then, and that was in an email. And then I'm in the drive-thru with my kids. And I thought, oh man, the first kid I ordered has the white body that I need for the second one. I wonder if I can just switcheroo, whatever. So I go... And her number is listed on the email, her actual phone number. So I called her and I was like, hi, Melanie. She's like, I was like, it's Leah. And she goes, oh yeah. And so we were chatting. I was like, I think we have a bit of a serendipitous moment here. And she's like, get out when I described to her what happened. And she goes, yeah. She goes, I'll send you a shipping label and you can just ship back. So how awesome, like just customer service, like everything worked out. I will get the colors that I wanted there. She's not stressing because she doesn't think that she disappointed a customer get a getting product back, all of this. And she said, I felt so bad because she said, that's the best news we've had all day that this happened. I was like, oh no. And it was so funny because she talked about Mercury and retrograde too, just crazy. So anyway, I have my two kits here. I thought I'd show both of them to you before I send them back. It was so beautifully packaged too. Like you get it. And these came so fast. I think they came, I think the first one came like maybe the next day even. It was insane. So anyway, it comes all wrapped up nice and there's this little sticker holding it open. And there was this lovely ribbon around all the yarn. So this color scheme and you get your little thing with your receipt and all this. And you get a little pouch that has all the, all the stitch markers you need in here, a ruler and a very large darning needle that works with your yarn. So, this was the original color scheme that I accidentally ordered. It's like this dusty pink and this baby poop, yellow green, and this white. It's very pretty. It very is. Very much is. 
it's just not my colors which again is fine so i am going to take the white out of this one uh-oh dropping things no worries just don't want the cat to get them charlie really likes he leaves my yarn alone for the most part but he really likes the needle keepers the minders on the ends so then the next box and i had a really hard time with this because i really do love these colors but this was going to be the main color that they subbed in for the white and this is so very much in my wheelhouse one of my colors however this is just a lot of it at once and with the contrast next to the blue I was just really worried that it would fight your eye a lot instead of being seamless. So this is the color scheme I'm going with. The white is the main body and the pink and the blue are the contrast. So I'm very excited about this. And let me give you a little zoom in on the blue clay if you don't know what blue clay is. I'm gonna put my hand behind it so we can really see that texture. So it's got this texture. I need to do more research about how it's actually spun there really isn't a lot of give, like there's almost no give in this yarn. So it might be a little bit tricky, but we're excited about it. So I have to print my label that they emailed me and send back one of these boxes. But I'm so grateful to the Knit Collage ladies. Their customer service was excellent. They were on top of it. They were understanding, they were kind, and they apologized with their mistake. I made the first, well first, we don't know who, I made the mistake by no double checking the actual name, but just wonderful, wonderful people. So really happy about that. So that's going on. I think, oh, do you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is October 19th, which means I get to open up my third, one of my 13 spooky days of October from Spun Right Round. Ah! Mm. Let me know what you guys want me to do. Should I try to do kind of like a little vlog practice for 13 days to kind of warm up for the holidays? What do you think? Or should I just show you guys next week the ones that I've opened? I don't know, comment below, let me know. Let me know, let me know. I just had a quick flash of like that song. It's not even related to let me know, but that song. Say my name, say my name. No one is around you. Say baby, I love you. <laughs> Guys do not need to hear my singing voice. I'm so sorry. So let me check my list here. Yeah, we got it all. Da -da! Done. Again, I don't really do show notes except on when I post a picture of a screenshot of my podcast once it's uploaded and put it on my Instagram and Facebook. Below it is where I will hashtag and also tag makers and patterns. So if you do have a question, you can look there first. If you still can't find the answer, just go ahead and leave a comment. I check all my comments and I read all of them. Mostly, I comment on almost all of them. So go ahead. So the prize for 500 subscribers, the wonderful little blue Q pouch with mushrooms and sticker and buttons. To win this, you must do, you must do two things three things technically you must be a subscriber on youtube be a subscriber follower on instagram and you have to leave a comment on instagram of two things well no should we do one or two hmm. <laughs> let's just do one tell me what your favorite fall or halloween tradition is favorite costume that you've ever made or worn or made for your kids or yourself or just something you really like to do in the fall so again you need to be a subscriber on youtube a follower on my Instagram, which is Pygmy Tiger Knits, just like my name here, and leave a comment telling me what your favorite fall memory is on the com. It's going to have a picture of this episode. On that picture, that post is where I need you to leave a comment. Hopefully, this isn't too difficult. I'm so sorry if it is. I'm still learning. This is my very first giveaway. So, giveaway! Yay! I hope you all have had a good time watching. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited. It means a lot. It just, I can't tell you how special I feel from all of you. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Bye.